<laughs> do re mi fa so la di do. <laughs> Daniela Beck, and I met this fine gentleman. Hello. And physician. Yes. Here at Board Vitals headquarters in New York City. That's right. Yeah. And I'm Mike Natter. I'm a resident physician in internal medicine, and I'm hanging out with Danielle, the coolest MP ever. Oh yeah, I'm a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I work in uh, cardiovascular surgical ICU somewhere. Somewhere cool. Somewhere very cool. Very yeah. cool. And I work at a hospital in New York City. And we were going to chat a little bit today about the differences and the similarities between NP and MD. Yes. And we will be funneling questions that our followers both asked us. So. Get excited. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> um, God, what do I really wish that you guys knew? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I don't know very much. I think, I mean, I, I look at you guys as like you're on the equivalent level of, I see, at least in my institution, it seems like you guys are autonomous clinicians mm -hmm. who can do everything that we can do. But I do notice that you guys round with an attending. So it's almost like, I feel like you guys are like residents with us. Mm -hmm. Is that not the case? I think it really depends on where you work, honestly. Um, my previous institution, nurse practitioners rounded with everyone. Uh, but they formulated their own plans of care. It was just multidisciplinary, mm -hmm. uh, but they were very autonomous. The institution where I am now, we don't really do a lot of rounding. So we go in, we see our own patients, we develop our plans of care. We will bounce ideas off of each other, off of the physicians or other nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, but we do practice in an in, in autonomous fashion. I would say, but technically, by the state where I'm living now, um, the law is like we can't be completely autonomous. So, okay. So in the state of Ohio, we are limited by that. So that's state by state. It's state by so state. So some states you could be entirely open up, hang a shingle, NP, you're good to go. Right. Okay. So in like in Maryland, for instance, they have full practice authority for nurse practitioners there. <clears throat> but when I was working at Johns Hopkins, I was an RN there. But where were you at? Johns Hopkins. Never heard of it. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> they are yeah. great. I love them. <laughs> I love them so much. But I just I was a nurse practitioner student there mm -hmm. and then an RN. But the nurse practitioners there, um, you know, if Johns Hopkins didn't want you to have full practice authority like you would still have to have sign off by a physician and I, I actually don't I don't think that they did that there I'm just saying like it's all like institution based. So, I see so it could vary it, it could vary it so, varies great but what that but what that shows is that the level of having the MP means that you that you are having that clinical autonomy so that you aren't uh, bound legally necessarily in every state that you can't just go and do your own thing Right. So my experience has been when I when I look from the outside looking in, I only know what I've seen within my institution, and so I don't know if what the New York State what that the law states, but it, it seems very similar to having like we have an APP team, which is like a, a practitioner team, mm -hmm. whether it be PA or MP, and then there's an MD attending who rounds with them, and it seems very a kind of a parallel to what I'm experiencing as a resident, where I make up my own plan, I round with an attending and staff it with them. Um, but you don't necessarily need that as an NP. No, you really don't have to. And where I work now is so busy that if you had to do that with every patient, we would never get done, honestly. Right. So I think it really depends on what area of practice you're in, what state you're in, what institution you're in. Mm -hmm. um, however, NPs can be uh, autonomous practitioners, but even so, either way, like most of the time in healthcare, you're going to bounce ideas off of each other and talk to each other about what you're doing. Um, so yeah, so either way, I think it's everyone still working together, but we got off course on that question. Yeah. Well, so Danielle, so what do you wish I knew about <laughs> I don't know. what you do? Um, I don't know that I, I guess like maybe everything that we just talked about. Yeah. Uh, our practice varies. Our training is very different. I will never be a person that's like, oh, we train the same way. We don't train anything close to us the same, mm -hmm. like not even close. Um, but I guess to know that the one of the best things about a nurse practitioner is that we are constant. 
when it comes to care, we're always there. Like there's always a nurse practitioner on the unit typically, um, or a nurse on the unit for that matter. So that's one of the best things about having us in practice. Like residents rotate, attendings tend to rotate, but mm -hmm. we usually are like always there. So we know what's going on on the unit, yeah. you know, and we try and like tie up all the loose ends um, when it comes to patient care. So I guess that would be one thing. I might have to come back to that. No, I think that's think reasonable. Think a little yeah, harder. We'll come back to it. We'll, we'll dive deeper. Why? What do you want me to know? Um, well, it's tough because I only know you in this setting. I don't know you in like a work setting, but the NPs that I work with, I, I like, they're very, very nice. I like them a lot. I, what I like about NPs is that they've had experience, clinical experience uh, as being RNs or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so they come to being an NP from a very different perspective from when I come from it. And I like their take on how they approach patient care, which is really interesting. Um, and I think sometimes that's a really good thing. And then sometimes that could uh, abut you know, my approach to a plan versus their approach mm -hmm. to a plan. But very seldom am I working directly with MPs, it's usually um, kind of in series where they'll, they'll have a series of patients and we'll have a series of patients and you don't necessarily overlap. Right, right. I think that's accurate. Yeah. We do the same thing. Yeah. So like residents take their own patients, we take our own patients. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. transition we kind of touched about that so we did tell me all the things okay so once again nurse practitioners varies by state institution and area of practice but in general uh, we do a lot of things that physicians do they call us an extender of care however I don't really know if that's like an appropriate term um, because we're doing a lot of like splitting the workload where I said before I think something that really differs is that we really do try I notice a lot of my area, area of practice, we do a lot of like tying up loose ends, like coordinating care, um, transferring patients, like finding out where they're going to go after the hospital. We do like a lot of like transitioning of care. Um, and I think we probably do that more in my area of practice because we can do procedures as nurse practitioners, but in general, um, physicians are doing more advanced procedures than we're doing and it's like a time constraint sort of thing. So we're there to tie up a lot of loose ends that they don't have time for. So I don't think that it is, but I do think that kind of as I mentioned before, the course that we've taken to come to this point is so different. So the way that we approach things might be different, yeah. but the critical thinking is the same. Yeah. We both want the best for the patient. We both understand, you know, medical physiology and we understand treatments. So I don't think that there's um, a difference in critical, in critical thinking. I think there's a difference in um, the, the factors and variables that are taken into account. Yeah, I completely agree. I would have answered that the exact same way. It's just, yeah. We did it's the way we're, we're yeah. trained differently. So we go by the way we're trained. I would say yes, in general. I would what, say, say, what are your hours like? It varies. It varies, but full time for me is three 12 hour shifts a week. They usually end up being 13, hours, 14 yeah. hours. Um, but we work six days on, six days off. And when you say six days on, that includes you working those three shifts and so you have those the rest of the week off. Yeah, so most oh, of us boy. will do. Three That's days, nice. most of us will do, <laughs> most of us will take a one day break in the middle, Yeah. but either way we can schedule our shifts so we get seven days off. So uh, although you That's may nice. like kill yourself six days in a row and need a day and a half to recover once Fair. you're finished, you still have like a solid five days where you're a functioning human being. Yes. Um, so yeah, yeah, we definitely get more days off for sure. and. I notice it myself that I get far more vacation time than uh, most of the doctors that I work with. So as a resident, uh, I'm not, at, you know, uh, I'm still technically in training. And so you're a full-fledged NP, yeah. you're a real person, you get a salary with I do. all these things. I get benefits. You get benefits. And I think you get, I don't, I don't know what to ask when you get paid, but I think you, you guys do tend to do pretty well from my we understanding. We do okay. We could do better. Could CRNAs do, better. do better. CRNAs do very well. Than we do. I think it's also institution dependent. So my understanding is. is that at my institution, I think the NPs do quite well. Whereas the residents, we have very little income and we work like 
horrendous, hellacious schedule. So yeah. in reference to that question from a resident to an MP, I think the MP definitely has a better schedule, better way of life, better income. Yeah, for so sure. Leave it at that. For now. For now. Until you, till well, you so then it depends. Attending? Well, then it depends on what you pick, right? So if right. I want, I'd like to be an endocrinologist when I grow up, and in such, I'm not going to be making GI money. I'm not going to be scoping and bringing in the big bucks. There's no cats. So there's no procedures. Derm money. Um, and definitely not derm, not money. derm money. Not derm money. <laughs> but um, but my hours will be significantly better, and I'll be doing what is valuable to me and what I enjoy, and I'll be um, taking care of patients that I relate to. And so for me, my quality of life will significantly increase. Uh, they can. If they go through the, the first assist training and get all of their hours in, they can assist in surgeries like PAs can. It's rare. It's it's more rare than seeing a physician's assistant do it. Uh, but if your institution will provide you with the opportunity to get into the OR and rotate into the OR, you 100% can. Actually, that, that gives me, I have a question for you. So based in my institution, what I've seen, um, like I was just currently sharing a workroom with the, the CT surgery NPs. And the dynamic, and this is kind of what I, I um, what's the word, I like um, pulled out from mm -hmm. this, but I could be wrong, is that they use the MPs to manage the floor, mm -hmm. and that that way the residents, the fellows, and the surgeons are in the OR doing the surgery, and then they'll round as a team at some point, but they're, they're, they're dealing with like all the post-op stuff, and all the pre-op mm -hmm. stuff, and all the, the catastrophes that happen on the floor while everyone's in the OR. Is that a typical way to do it, or is that not usually the case? Um, you can. I've seen it done both ways. Uh, you can also run a model where NPs and PAs both rotate in the in the OR and on the floor, mm -hmm. the ICU floor. So I think it just depends on where you work. Where I work, the NPs don't do first assist in the OR. They manage the floor, solely manage the floor. Got it. Solely manage the floor.